we trust you've had a day in which you have taken some time to honor motherhood. If you had a wonderful mother, just be blessed and just thank the Lord for her and thank her. If you have a mother that needs prayer, then let's pray for them right now. Lord Jesus, we pray for every mother alive today who needs you in their heart so they can really be a mother. We understand it would take a lot of healing and a lot of connecting, and it would take a lot of forgiveness on both ends and forgiveness to you from you, and it would take a, a lot of connecting and loving and forgiving. It would be like baking a cake. They would have to put in some love and gentleness and kindness and forgiveness and a lot of love and mix it all together with you, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God Almighty and that they would stir that into a just a beautiful, beautiful mix and pour it, Lord, into the into the need pan of their lives, into both lives, into the family's lives, Lord. We know that you would like to heal, and we ask you to help in every case today where a mother that doesn't know you needs you. And Lord, we also Pray for every mother who is a Christian. There are still lots of needs in Christian mothers' hearts and minds. Many times, mothers don't speak the needs that are in their hearts and minds only to you. Many times, the things they keep in their hearts are like Mary. They just She just kept them and pondered them and talked to you about them, Lord. We don't know the needs of Christian mothers today, but we know they are many, and we know they are varied, and we know you know. So we pray for those who do know you today too. We ask blessings upon every woman who has in any way been a mother to children. We know there are many, many fine women who have invested in children they didn't biologically birth, but they have done the godly, right, motherly acts for those children. And we ask blessings upon them. We pray for those who will be mothers, should you tarry, that you will especially watch over the ones today, Lord, that are growing up in this world as it is today with so many things upside down and right wrong and wrong right and your coming nearing. We pray for those who will be mothers. We just ask today, Lord, that motherhood could come before your throne. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to share just a few things with you about motherhood. I noticed that Joe McFarland from our church had posted the Guinness World Record for the number of children. 69 children born to one mother. Can you imagine that? 27 pregnancies. 27 pregnancies, if you're wondering how she's got 69 kids in. 16 of them were twins. 16 of the births, twins. Seven of the births were triplets, and four of them were quadruplets. Quadruplets. Think about that. Think about having that many children. Your oldest ones in 27 years uh, would would already be grandparents, probably parents, making you a grandparent before you even got to the last child. Wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? I have one son, two granddaughters, and three great-granddaughters. And I think that's a pretty full house. Many of you are somewhere in between those numbers. The great thing is we love them, don't we? Mothers. We've heard a lot of mommy, mommy, mommy. Mamaw, nanny, whatever we're called as 
grandmother and great-grandmother. We've held little hands. We've changed a lot of diapers. We've burped a lot of babies. We've, we've done a lot of things through the years. But we've seen smiles. We've seen the sparkles in eyes. We've been allowed by the Lord to be the greatest influence in little lives. To guide and to direct and to play with and educate and enjoy and to tell them about Jesus. We are blessed. I would like you to think about Hannah and, and how true Hannah was. Hannah is one of the people in the Bible that, that I admire. I admire her greatly. I admire her as a, as a woman. I admire her as a mother. I admire her as a person of character. I admire her as being honest and having integrity with God. Having been a pastor some 40 plus years, I'm sorry to say I've witnessed a lot of people who were not true to the word I heard them say to the Lord. I've heard people ask the Lord for husbands or wives, but when they got them, they didn't serve the Lord, or for children, and then they didn't serve the Lord, for jobs or homes, and they didn't serve the Lord. But Hannah, Hannah is someone you should read and you should think about what this lady did. She is in the book of 1 Samuel. And what happened is she is part of a two-wife family. Now, any time you, you get into that situation, you're into a mess. God never intended us to be, except in a marriage, one man and one woman. And Hannah was a wife that the husband really, really loved. And the other lady was someone that had children. Hannah had none. And each year when they would go to make sacrifices and make that trip down to the temple, the one wife would, so to speak, bully Hannah. She would uh, use abusive language to her. Uh, she would um, kind of needle her. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a, a phrase that means you kind of just stick little phrases into her that hurt her, made her weep, made her mourn, made her grieve. She would brag on the fact that she had children and that the husband had to give her more offerings for the children, and that Hannah was barren and just got the offering for Hannah. And year after year, she would do this to Hannah. But one year, Hannah took it in hand, and she went to the Lord at the temple, and she prayed, and she prayed for a son, and she prayed so hard that the priest Eli thought she was drunk. He thought she was just there drunk. And he started to chasten her. And she said, no, I'm not drunk. I'm here praying for a son. And do you know that as she prayed for that son, she prayed so earnest and so intent did she want that child that she said, if you give me a child, Lord, I'll bring him to the temple and give him to the priest at the temple so he can be raised in your house and be brought up as a priest. Wow. I'll bring him here as a little boy. Now that is a promise. I have way too much clinginess in me. I can hear my son laughing at me and saying I was too clingy. Probably all my generations would say that. I would really be sweating 
drops of blood as Jesus did or something human similar, if I told the Lord, I would take my child and take him and just leave him at a temple to be raised by someone else. That would take every ounce of faith in me. I, I would be like Isaac. When Abraham offered Isaac out of pure faith that God could raise him up again. I think I would find that easier to find faith in as horrible as it would be than to say, here's my child and leave that child and go back home miles away not knowing what's going on with my child. But Hannah made that agreement. And the Lord gave her a son. The Lord gave her the prophet Samuel. I've often said Hannah wanted a son. God wanted a prophet. God gave Hannah the son. And, and so now she's got this little boy. And, and that's where so many people break the promise. They, they come to the Lord and they ask the Lord for something. And, and they plead with the Lord for it. They beg for it. They let him know this is what I'm willing to give up if you'll do this for me. These are the changes I'll make in my life if you'll just do this. But then when the Lord does it, they don't keep their word. But Hannah has this little boy. Has a little baby boy. She's changing his diaper. She's, she's breastfeeding him. She's spending hours with him right in her bosom. She probably, you know, wipes his little hair different directions. Plays with his little hand. Puts her finger, I'm made to believe, in his little fist. Pumps his little feet and pats his little bottom whenever she's changing him. Puts him up on her and burps him. This little boy, she's watching him turn into a, a, a little toddler. She's watching him uh, in the crawling stage and in the toddler, the walking stage. But her mind is telling her he's getting old enough to wean. He's getting old enough to wean. And, and, and as she gets to the stage that she knows that he doesn't need to breastfeed anymore, and, and then he goes through the stage that, that he's potty trained, and she knows it's time. Now, I, I think she put it off just a little bit. I think there's scripture to indicate she kind of put it off a little bit, maybe for a year. Then she knew, I have to keep my word to the Lord. I have to keep my word to the Lord. I have to keep my word to the Lord. Have you ever been in that place? I have. I, I've been in places where I said things to the Lord. I promised things to the Lord. And then when the time came and the pressure was like being in a vice and you wanted to excuse yourself, but yet you knew that was a real happening between you and the Lord and you need to honor it. And Anna did. <laughs> Praise the Lord, she did. She took that little boy and took the offering for her and for him that was given to her liberally and went down to the temple and she presented the prophet Samuel to the old priest Eli. And I know she would have had concerns because Eli was a very, very old man at this time and, and he was blind and he was huge. He couldn't move around very good. And his sons were taking care of the temple in many ways, and they were evil. They were doing horrible things. But she left her son there as she promised God. And then we read in the book of Samuel where God came one night to the boy Samuel and called him. And he thought it was Eli, so he runs over to Eli and he said, did you call me? No, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. He lies down, second time, calls him. 
I didn't call you. Third time calls him, I think, was three times. And Eli said, go and ask the Lord what it is. It's the Lord talking to you. And the Lord called Samuel to be his prophet. And he told him what was going to happen to Eli and his sons, that he was going to wipe the slate and he was going to make Samuel the new prophet. Samuel grew up in the house of the Lord because his mother kept her word. And when you read First and Second Samuel, you find him paired with Saul and being a faithful prophet through all of Saul's deception. At one case, Saul was sinning, sinning, sinning. And if the scripture tells you that one night, while Saul was contemplating his next sin, Samuel prayed through the night for him. And we read that when Samuel finally went to Saul at that last disobedience, that Saul pulled on his garment until he tore Samuel's garment. Samuel said, God's departed from you, Saul. And then the Lord sent Samuel to take oil and to go to Jesse's house. And he looked at all those big, tall boys, and the Lord said, no, that's not it. Jesse, do you have another one? I got a little shepherd boy up here on the hill. His name's David. Go get him. He's the one. And Samuel poured that oil over David's head told him he was God's own man. Samuel, when you read about Samuel, you're reading about Hannah's boy. You're reading about the, the prophet that was raised because she kept her word. She didn't start a bunch of excuses. She didn't back out because it was hard. But she did what she promised the Lord that she would do. Now you might say, well, Ma, why didn't you go to Mary? <laughs> well, I would have, but the Lord told me to tell you about Hannah. You know Mary, the mother of Jesus, blessed in heaven. When heaven had a conversation, they said, here's the woman right there, Mary, down there in Nazareth. You see her? She's got the qualities, and she'll stay true. <laughs> That's who we need to be the mother of Jesus. When heaven looks down at you and points to you what he needs you to do, can heaven count on you to do what you ought to do? Lord Jesus, we pray that as you've taken total control of this message we pray that you will deal with whoever is hearing this that knows I haven't kept my word to Jesus I haven't kept my word I made promises that I've excused myself for I need to get myself back to where I keep my word I repent, and I come to you and say, what do you want me to do now? I can't go back there, but I can present myself today. I feel right now, Lord, I know that I'm preaching this at a completely different time than it goes to the audience, but I know you're going to deal with someone. I know you have people in mind. There are people that were raised, and they know better than... OMG, they know better than saying that. They know better than the curse words that are coming out of their mouth. They know better than staying out of church. They know better than letting their children see and hear things that are wrong. They know better than constantly drinking or taking drugs. They know better than sin. They know you gave them an assignment and they gave you their word. And they've backed down on it. And today, you have lovingly reached out and said, 
I want you to do what you promised me to do. Come to me now, and let's do what we can of it while time lasts, while your life lasts. Come, I have a place at the table, and it is yours. It will never be anybody else's. It will always be yours, and I am waiting for you to come because I love you and I care about you and I want to pour out mercy and pour out grace and set you in your place at the table. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help them reach out to someone and witness this very day that they are going to keep their word. In Jesus' name we pray.